Hi lovelies, it's France. Welcome back again for a new journal on Monday. Uh, I'm still working in my handmade heavy watercolor paper art journal. Um, and I'm starting with some tags. These are European tags. They have, they're nothing like the American Manila tags. It's uh, quite cheaper paper. And I'm gluing them down using golden regular gel medium. As you can hear, I left part of my voice in Emblem, where I spend the weekend giving some make and takes. But apart from my voice, I'm doing pretty fine, so I, I do sound a bit like a hard rock singer at the moment. So gluing my tags down, making a collage of it, so that I have some texture on my page uh, to play with. As I did have to leave for the weekend, I didn't want to make my journaling too complicated this week. I wanted to keep it simple so that I can still do a video for you and still have some fun in my journal. But I did try to keep it simple, in a way. Now that everything is stuck on my paper, I have to protect these tags a bit because the paper is so cheap. I can go in with um, products without having the paper suffering. So I'm adding a layer of gesso all over uh, the tags. Too much of gesso on my paper I'm using it up on a cardboard that I will be using to make another journal so no wasting here drying it just a bit but the gesso uh, was trapped under my tags so I'm using it as a glue I'm pressing it to get the, the too much of gesso out of there and using the, the wet gesso that's still underneath to glue down my tags completely. This way they're completely sandwiched between the gesso. That's what you get when you play with um, cheaper paper. But as I had these, I wanted to use them up because I'm tempted to always go for my for my manila tags. These are Derwent Intense blocks. They're a bit like pure paint blocks that you can uh, draw with. And once you're done, when you blend them with water, they won't move anymore. So then once they're dry, they're not water soluble anymore. Which is very interesting because when you uh, play again on top of it, you know you won't have any color contamination or anything. So I'm going in with the water. I'm blending my ink tents. I do try to keep uh, the binding of my journal quite clear because I don't want all the other pages to be the same color.
that's when I realized my gesso wasn't completely dry, so I had to go back in with my heat gun and add some more color. Now you can use these um, Derwent Inktense bars in different ways, uh, Inktense blocks, sorry, in different ways. You can use them to draw directly on the paper, but you can also go over them with a wet brush and pick up the color and then go over the paper, which will give you a different finish. So they're quite versatile, you can do a lot of different, thing, a lot of different things with them. And the, the colors are very, very rich, very intense. Once the first layer is dry, I'm adding a second layer, adding some orange accents on the edges of uh, the different tags to make the texture underneath pop even more. And as my first layer is dry, the two colors won't blend together. My orange will really stay on top of the magenta that's underneath. As you can see, I spent quite some time drying because I'm adding lots of water. And as I want every layer to be dried before I go in with the second one. See here I'm picking up the color with my wet brush. This gives you a more intense color than when you uh, do it with the block on the paper and then add the water. So now that this is dry, I want to add a color wash, but as the color wash isn't reacting like I want it to, I'm blending it using a baby wipe. And this again will make the texture pop. Um, a bit more. My whitewash isn't completely dry so I'm adding splatters of water and this will pick up the whitewash when I go over with my roll. Then adding some more orange accents this time with pen pastel. And I'm using the pen pastel to keep the colors soft. I want accents, but I don't want them to scream. So I'm going in with something soft that I can blend easily around using just a piece of paper cloth. And changing color to remind the colors that are underneath the whitewash. I could use a fixative on this one without a problem because my Derwent uh, Inktense blocks wouldn't move as they're permanent once blended with water. But instead of using a regular fixative, I'm using this Tress Crackle paint that I'm applying with a card. And I'm applying it quite roughly. I'm not um, taking care of having um, a regular layer all over my page. Now 
now I'm going in with sanding paper to take off the color here and there and once again accentuate the texture. This will um, take off the crackle paint in some places, but that's an interesting um, way to add texture. It would also distress my paper um, in the same time. to use this image which is a vintage photo of a little boy that worked in the mines but it made me so sad just looking at it that I changed my mind. I'm going back in with white, white pen pastel to this will be picked up in the cracks of the crackle paint so the crackle paint will be more visible and um, where the sanding uh, paper took color away paper is naked again and that again that also will pick up more of the white pen pastel so it adds a layer of interest on the page and then blending again with a paper cloth to take the excess of pen pastel away we all have these kind of little embellishments at home I think I've had these for ages can't even remember when I bought them but I thought they looked cool on uh, this background. They're quite delicate to work with, so I'm gluing them down using double-sided tape. And the one that will be in the middle, I have to cut it because if I don't, every time I open and close my art channel, I will um, tear it. to make sure it won't be uh, damaged in any way when we manipulate the journal, I'm sealing it with some decoupage glue. It will dry completely clear so you won't see it and the leaves will be completely protected. Here again my layer of uh, intense blocks is very interesting because with the decoupage glue it won't react. Using washi tape over the binding and also sealing it with some decoupage glue to make sure it will stay in place. Now I thought it might be a cool idea to go in with a fountain pen for once and some India ink. So I'm going with that idea. best way to clean up your fountain pen when you're done or stains you might have on your page is using blending solution by Ranger which is um, usually used with the alcohol inks and it works pretty fine with the India ink too. I'm adding more of a shadow with a water-soluble black pencil. I thought it might help uh, make my writing work on the page because I didn't like it at, the, at this point. As I still have some India ink left, I'm using it to add some splatters on my page using a brush. Going 
going around the edges with black soot distress ink. And then adding um, the same color as the leaves on the washi tape using an intense ink tense uh, block to make the washi tape look a bit more transparent. Still not liking the writing, so I'm going over it with a white uniball pen as I still hoped I might like it at some point. But I didn't. So I'm going in the usual way uh, with my text printed on craft basil. I think that if I had written my uh, wordings a bit bigger, I might have liked it. But This is handmade paper that I will be using underneath my text. to bring all these pieces together so I'm first gluing them down using double-sided tape and then I'm running it through my sewing machine to add some stitches all around the edges and make it look a bit more interesting voila the perfect way to hide whatever it is I don't like This is burlap lace that I got as a Christmas uh, gift wrap decoration. And after gluing it down, I'm adding some gesso with my finger. two breads to make it look a bit less floating. Then I'm 
giving my two breads the same gesso treatment to blend everything together, to make it work together. Getting out a vintage photo and distressing it a bit because it was looking too white. I really love all these little kids. You should see their smile. <laughs> They really look like they're up to no good. And then going in with my date stamp as I thought I was done. That's all the time I had to make my pitch before I left uh, Saturday morning. But then yesterday evening, Sunday evening, when I got back home, I wanted to add a couple of things so I'm going back in with some clear stamps which I've had for so long I don't even know anymore what brand they are or anything and I'm stamping them, them down with uh, coffee archival ink and then I'm also going in with some white stays on as I don't use my white stays on that often I every time I have to reload uh, the ink pad this is a Tim Holtz uh, background stamp just adding some random stamping on the page when you're using stays on you should never glue down the plastic lid to the top lid because your stays on won't be sealed anymore and it will dry out way faster gluing little metallic embellishments by Tim Holt this is a file tab and seems that I love to have elements going from one page to the other in this journal because I've done it several times already. I wanted to add a bit more distress ink on uh, the sticker inside. It was looking too white to my taste and then putting it back in place. So I guess my lesson for myself on this page is don't be afraid to cover up things you don't like with things you do like. And that will make for a page you will end up liking. See you back next, next week and I hope with a better voice. Have a happy week. Ta-da!